How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be bringing you guys the brand new content that was just released into MLB The Show. I'm going to be starting with a couple of new cards and some of the schedule that's upcoming here. As you can see, Zach Greinke and Hyunjin Ryu did indeed go up to a diamond. We also see the Bartolo Colon flashback for completing the Cougs Moments missions. Uh, definitely go ahead and do that. That is live now. In the pack store, we have Evan Longoria, 96 overall in the set, 17 headliners packs, which are pretty nice as well. Those are also going for 5K stubs. And we also see the 94 overall signature series, Troy Percival, who does th indeed throw a slider. So that's the difference between his diamond card and the signature series one. He also has a lot better per nines and better control as well. So nice card right there. Let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. And I'll be covering uh, the, the other signature series cards at the end of this video. But I did want to include this game of ranked seasons. I'm going up against Lefty Grove. And this is actually the second time I've faced this card. This opponent has some of the new newer cards in this game. He has Hanley Ramirez. He has Josh Donaldson as well. And uh, to start the game off, he has Roberto Alomar ripping a base hit into the gap. Sitting on that slider inside, inside out, it hits it into the right center field gap. Definitely a good piece of hitting right there. Now we're facing Hanley Ramirez, who he's hitting 091 with. Probably just recently picked this card up, tried him out, and maybe went 0 for in his first couple games. Or maybe 1 for one hit, 1 for 9, 1 for 8, something like that. But uh, there he's knocking a base hit, so he's increasing the average against me. He is sending another base hit with Willie Mays uh, down the left field line. That's going to result in a double because for whatever reason, these guys can't throw the ball in. Anyway, I'm down a run already. Have two guys in scoring position and nobody out yet in this inning. So Frank Thomas is going to smack one to right field. That is Tony Gwynn getting a nice running animation there and a strong throw. Throws out 91 speed in Hanley Ramirez trying to score on the tag up from third base. Definitely a solid throw there. I was surprised to be able to get him and it kept me out of the inning or kept me from giving up more runs in that inning and lowering Kershaw's confidence even further. I started this game off with a nice strikeout. I tried to swing at that uh, pitch, but for whatever reason, got a check swing and Tony Gwynn is going down looking. Uh, to the next batter though, Willie Mays, very same hit result, could have resulted in a home run if I had a guy on base or potentially started off something in this first inning, but I mean, I, I got dotted up right there on that fourth ball. That was a really tough pitch to hit, and I got to give credit to the opponent. He pitched well in that first inning. I had only really one good pitch to hit, and uh, if you count the ball with Tony Gwynn that I checked swung at, definitely could have been hit for a base knock, but that was also a good pitcher's pitch. Anyway, we're down one run. I'm looking to... Uh, Get something going at the plate. Once again, another check swing strikeout. Just unfortunate, especially early on in the game. Uh, anytime you give the opponent a chance to get their confidence up on some of those pitches, whether it's a fastball, forkball, changeup, anything that's off speed uh, when facing this lefty grove, he does throw 100 miles an hour, so I'm looking to sit on mostly the fastball as I swung late on that one. Definitely a good pitch up and away. But yeah, just trying to attack some of the pitches that lefty grove throws and trying to get the confidence down on some of them so that way he has to go to that fastball and I'll be ready for it but anyway uh, nonetheless th throughout this game so far I was struggling a little bit at the play got a couple check swing strikeouts hitting the ball hard right to the outfielders but there's a lot of game left and I'm only down one I mean I have Kershaw on the mound and he's starting to settle in a little bit I got the last couple outs in a row and it's about 30 pitches in right now facing the pitcher got lefty Grove to go the other way with that but now we have the top of the lineup up once again and I'm continuing to try and work the outside half right here. I mean, he, this opponent was struggling a little bit with the pitch away, sitting more on the pitch inside, really turning on a lot of those. And uh, he had those base hits off the inside pitches early in this game so far. So I'm going to try to mix it up. I mean, I can't only throw outside. I have to mix it up going in and out inside and uh, mix with the off speed. I noticed that he was also early on some of the change-ups that I was throwing. He's pretty much laying off the 12-6 curveball. A lot of people do facing Kershaw, but... Uh, he was not able to lay off the changeup, so I'm going to look to go to that a little bit more as he moves it on in this game. But Ricky Henderson grounds out to shortstop there. Now we have Pudge up at the plate and looking to just get our first base hit of the game. I mean, there's a nice early hit. PCI wasn't really on the baseball there, but I will take that base knock. I mean, anything to get something going. At this point, I mean, Kershaw's coming up. He's knocking a base hit. That's going to allow uh, the top of the lineup to try and get something going here. I mean, it moves the... Gets rid of the pitcher spot right there. I had one out. Potentially could have bunted him, moved him over to second. I just felt like swinging away. And uh, I was, felt like I was hitting the ball right in this game. Just So far to this point, I only had a couple base knocks. They're all in this one inning. 
And we have two down. We have Lou Gehrig up the plate. I choked it with Willie Mays. I had a nice opportunity to score, and I, ch I choked it. But I, Lou Gehrig is coming up clutch with the base hit up the middle. Kershaw gets thrown out at the plate. I thought for sure I'd be safe, but 25 speed is a lot slower than I thought in this game, and he wasn't even close. That was gunned down by half the half the distance between the bases. But anyway, now it is a tie game. I'm looking to continue and pitch well. I mean, I've shut him down for three innings since giving up the first run in the first inning, but uh, definitely could have had a chance to break the game open for this guy. I mean, he had guys on base, nobody down in the inning. He's just one big hit away. Really, and it was with Frank Thomas up when I got that double play. There I was getting the strikeout. That's a huge pitch. I mean, uh, right down the plate, and he swings right through it. I'm going back to it with the slider once again, facing Gwynn. And I got him pretty much same location, same type of pitch. Just a different hitter, different handedness of hitter. And I was able to get him with that slider. But uh, this opponent was able to keep me off the board for the most part. I mean, four hits to three hits through four innings right here. We're in the bottom of the fourth. We have a chance to get something going. I dropped the PCI right there, got under that one with Roberto Alomar, sent it into center field. And this opponent was kind of doing that where he would run way behind the baseball and come in to, to receive it, to catch it with a running start. And uh, I just was wondering if that ball was carrying more than I thought. It just kind of threw me off a little bit. But I also didn't, I knew that going into it after he did it the first couple times. So uh, I tried to just bring my runners back to the base. Didn't want to get caught up with another double play or you know, uh, potentially run myself out of the inning. So anyway, uh, we're trying to just pitch with this guy. I mean, Kershaw has been dealing thus far. After giving up that one run, I'm able to get the goal bar of confidence. This is really important because I think it's extremely difficult, uh, actually almost impossible to score off Kershaw once he does have that goal bar of confidence. Really the only way to score off of him is if, he, uh, if you take that away and you're able to score the ball consistently, rip him a couple base hits, or if the opponent gets a little bit wild, if they're using him and uh, is not able to throw first pitch strikes, then he will lose that goal bar of confidence. That's the same goes for any type of pitcher, and it really depends on the individual confidence as well. I just like to talk a little bit about that just to give you guys the best possible tips. But I was able to hit a double with Willie Mays. Unfortunately, Kershaw was on first base. I mean, it's definitely a good thing, but the 25 speed kept me from scoring and advancing to third potentially on that last hit. But anyway, we do have Lou Gehrig up at the plate. This opponent has Lefty Grove on the mound still. I thought he might take him out and go to a different lefty at this point, but he throws a fastball up in the zone, and Lou Gehrig smacks that one, deposits it into right field. And uh, Lou Gehrig has been my best hitter since picking him up. Lefty, lefty, I think I've hit better against lefties with him than righties. But at the same time, I've faced quite a bit of lefties. People tend to bring in relief pitchers like Zach Britton or Araldis Chapman against him. Billy Wagner is another one. But so far, I mean, Kershaw has been locked down, shut down for six innings. Uh, and we're in the seventh inning right now. He's only at like 57 pitches, 58 pitches, something like that. And uh, he is pitching really, really well. Right here, I was, I did lose the goal bar of confidence. This is kind of what I wanted to talk about. I threw a curveball low in the zone to Willie Mays. That was the first pitch of the at-bat. He loses that goal bar and then gives up a hit the following pitch. So now I don't have that goal bar of confidence anymore. This opponent is starting to string together some, some base knocks. I probably should have went to a mound visit. After giving up that hit with Frank Thomas, I did go to a mound visit. And as you can see, I got the gold bar back. But after giving up that hit to Willie Mays, I think I probably should have taken the mound visit. At the same time, though, you kind of have to pick and choose your spots because now I cannot take another one. So once he gave up that hit to Tony Gwynn, I figured, you know, I got to take Kershaw out of this game. I don't want him to blow it with a grand slam or something facing Josh Donaldson against a lefty. So I went with Bruce Suter. He gets the double play, but I'll trade that run for a double play in this situation. This late in the game, I don't think I would have been able to throw him out at the plate either. But, I mean, I don't know how this guy just hit that that last pitch. A, uh, what was it? A splitter low and away. I have no idea how he pulled it. It was a very early swing, and he pulled down the first baseline with Ichiro. I know Ichiro's a glitch in this game. He's a beast. But uh, I don't think that that hit should ever be rewarded in that way. But it is what it is. I mean, the, it's part of the game. I got a couple early hits as well in this one. And we're both playing the same game. So I just thought I would point that out uh, to where, I mean, it's a 4-3 game. It definitely could have been a little bit different. And uh, I could have had a, a bigger lead at this point with the same results. But Lou Gehrig is literally putting the team on his back. He has drove in all five runs in this game. He has the, the single in the first inning. Or actually, he struck out in the first inning. But the single in his first hit... Which, or his first at-bat that resulted in a hit. 
Uh, he had the RBI, could have had two RBIs, then he hit the three-run shot, and then a solo shot. So all five runs driven in. If we're able to close this game out, then he will be the player of the game. We have uh, the game tie run at the plate. Josh Donaldson and Tony Gwynn on first. And I was able to get him with that, that sinker inside, move up to 815 rating. That game was actually for the CS as well. But uh, back to some more content, we have some signature series packs in the store for 35k stubs. You can purchase two of these now. They did have them for 40k stubs before, but now they're kind of dropping the price. There's also a stub sale going on. We have new Battle Royale rewards. Uh, Reggie Jackson, 99 overall for a flawless Battle Royale. Definitely a good card. Thought that his hitting stats would be a little bit better, and that's crazy to think about because they're really good. But I just figured Reggie Jackson would have... 120 power, you know, some something ridiculous like that. But anyway, Jorge Posada signature series as well. Battle Royale flawless 12 and 0 reward. That's awesome to see. We also see that uh, there's a new conquest map. It's for uh, Jeff Samarja. You will be able to unlock hidden stubs, XP, and packs along the way. I think if you get near the mouth of this shark uh, by the tip of his nose, then you will be able to unlock a ball in his habit pack. So that's awesome as well. Here's the Samarja. Not really a good card. But uh, intriguing for people that might have a budget team or no money spent type of team. Has a lot of uh, pitches with a lot of velocity, though. So it's going to be tough to mix in, I guess, velocity and speed differential with that card. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm College Lefty, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.